everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video we're going to be talking about waxworm addiction now i don't know what else to call it i've seen it called waxworm addiction everywhere however i don't want to use the word addiction when it's not really comparable to like what humans think of addiction as i would say waxworm preference but that doesn't really stress how bad it actually is when animals have this problem or i should say leopard geckos or reptiles have this problem but basically, waxworm addiction or waxworm preference is where a leopard gecko or another reptile has been fed waxworms in a plentiful amount, like daily or like the only insects they're getting are waxworms. And they start to build up this craving for it, this preference for it, because waxworms are a very tasty treat and they are like really fatty. So it's like junk food for humans. And so the leopard geckos will decline all other food except waxworms. This is a problem because they are lacking in nutrition. First of all, it's good for your leopard gecko or your reptile to have a varied diet to begin with so it's good for them to eat all kinds of insects and not just one kind but waxworms are especially bad because they lack nutrition they're high in fat whenever someone is in my dms and they say my leopard gecko is not eating i immediately ask what were you feeding the leopard gecko? And they say he'll only eat waxworms. It is such a common occurrence. This can also happen with other insects, but with waxworms it is like the most prevalent. So in this video, I wanna talk about what waxworm addiction or waxworm preference is, why it's happening, and how you can correct it. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. Also, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and away we go. So what is it? Waxworm addiction is where your leopard gecko or other reptile refuses any food that is not a waxworm. You can try offering literally any other type of insect and they'll show no interest, but the moment that you show a waxworm, they have interest. This can be happening for like a couple days in a row. It can be happening for weeks. It can be happening for months. The longer that this problem is not addressed, the unhealthier and like more dangerous that situation becomes. Now, how do you correct waxworm addiction or waxworm preference? So it's a challenge. It is not something that's easily fixed. And I have done this myself in geckos that I rescued from Craigslist that were on waxworms. They were very, very overweight. And from the moment that I wouldn't offer them waxworms, they would not eat anything for months. It is not something that's easy to break, but I want you to know that it is correctable. And this is the case with any insect. So like sometimes this can happen with superworms where a reptile or a leopard gecko is just just only eating superworms and won't eat anything else. That's bad as well. It's not as bad as waxworm addiction or waxworm preference, but it's it's bad. So you'll want to correct it then too. The way to correct a waxworm preference is to never offer waxworms. Now you might think, oh God, I'm starving my gecko. You might think like, isn't it more cruel to not feed them anything rather than to feed them something that's bad for them? And that would be the case with other animals perhaps, but reptiles are really good at not eating for long periods of time. That is why they're so stubborn. Like they'll just be like, no, I don't want anything else other than waxworms. And if you don't offer waxworms, they'll still be like, no, I don't want anything actually. I'll just not eat. And it can be very stressful for you, but eventually they will come around. It can take weeks or months to break this waxworm preference or waxworm addiction. And the only thing you can do at that time is to continue to offer other types of foods. If you get scared, right? Oh God, it's not eating. And you offer a waxworm while you're trying to break that preference, that will just reinforce the behavior and it'll be like starting from square one. There's a few things that you can do in order to get them to eat other insects or try other insects. And we're gonna go over some of those methods now. So one of my favorite insects to restart a diet is the hornworm. So I'll give you an example of a gecko that didn't have any wax from addiction, but just wasn't eating. So as my gecko Benjin, when he first arrived, he would not take any food for two whole months. Now, because I had leopard gecko experience and I was, you know, watching out for other signs of illness in him, I wasn't particularly concerned. I know it can take some geckos or reptiles in general time to get acclimated to a setting, but after two months, I was starting to get really worried. And so I ordered hornworms. And as soon as I presented him with the hornworm, he was like, mm, yes, food, 
very tasty. I will eat every single time now. And I've never had an issue with Benjin being food picky or having like no interest in food ever since. Whenever I have a gecko that's like been a bit picky, I've always used a hornworm to kind of like entice them. Or if I have a female gecko who's ovulating and she doesn't want to eat, I'll buy hornworms because I know she'll probably want those. They're an insect that has like just as much success rate with getting geckos to eat as waxworms, but they don't have all of the fat. Now they don't have a lot of protein either so you can't just offer hornworms however they are great to restart a diet and what I mean by restart is to like get them interested in eating something else again or just eating in the first place the great thing about hornworms is they are full of moisture content full of calcium and they don't have like a hard exoskeleton so they're not gonna cause any issues with a tummy that hasn't been eating food well so they're great I love them but like I said they don't have a lot of protein so they're not something that you can offer every single time they're mostly just like a treat so so what you want to do is entice your gecko to eat other types of insects as well. Now you're going to want to try everything before you start to go the route of like rapashi grub pie and assisted feeding. I really don't recommend assisted feeding unless you absolutely have to. So we're going to talk about some other things you can try before we get to that, but just know I will talk about that. So hornworms is one option you can try. Offering a hornworm works a lot of times and once you get them to try a hornworm, they might feel more inclined to try another type of insect like a cricket or a mealworm or a dubia roach or a superworm or anything you have in your arsenal of insects. So if they are willing to accept one of those insects after you've offered a hornworm, you should be on the road to recovery, so to speak, and you should not offer waxworms until this issue is long past. Like I would avoid offering waxworms for a few months and then when you do offer them, only offer a couple at a time and only offer them like once a month. They really are a treat for leopard geckos. Now, if you offer a hornworm to your gecko and they will eat it, but they won't eat anything else, like they won't eat dubia or superworm or mealworm or cricket, what you can do is like go to offer a hornworm and then at the last second back out and do a bait and switch and give them a different insect that they bite down onto. Or you can take a small hornworm and like layer another insect with it and then they eat both at the same time. Just make sure that you're offering small food items that way they can swallow both. Now if your gecko is smart and doesn't fall for those things or if your gecko does not want to accept accept hornworms at all, you can just leave a bowl of food in the enclosure and like wait it out with your gecko. So you can leave some dubia roaches, you can leave mealworms, superworms, or crickets or locusts or whatever you have that's not a waxworm. You can leave them in a bowl in the enclosure 24 seven, swap them out every day. That way you can have like newly gut loaded insects into the enclosure, make sure they're dusted in calcium and all that jazz. But once you introduce those insects into the enclosure and you leave them in there, hopefully your gecko will come across them and see movement and be enticed by them. Now, if this isn't working either, and I'd give it a few weeks before you start saying it's not gonna work, but once this doesn't work either, then you can start to get a bit more creative. You can offer food on tongs and see if they like it better that way. You can try to let them free hunt, so you can put them in a container and allow insects to crawl around with them, and that might entice them that way. And if none of these things that I've mentioned works, and you're worried about your gecko getting food because they have an unhealthy body from not eating and then also from having eaten all that fat before, what you can do is mix up some rapashi grub pie. Now this is not going to be a long-term solution. This is only going to be a temporary solution. So you are going to have to tr keep trying the methods that I mentioned along with doing this. So the rapashi grub pie, you'll mix it up. Like I think it's two to one, two parts water, one part the solution. And then I make mine a little bit more watery so that I can put it into a syringe. And then like in geckos where I've had to force feed them or assist feed them due to like, like for example, my gecko Melisandre, every single time that she ovulates, that she has become egg bound or stopped eating or anything like that, I've had to assist feed her just a few times and then she's right as rain. But if you have a gecko that is absolutely refusing to eat any of the insects you've offered and it's been like over a month now, you can go the route of assisted feeding. Now, I want you to be very careful when you do this. When you take the food up into the syringe or into the dropper, you only wanna be giving your gecko a little bit at a time. Leopard geckos naturally will flick their tongue out if you like touch the top of their nose. And when they do that, just let them lick some of it off. They might like it and they might wanna eat from it. 
they also might not like it, but at least you're getting a couple drops in there for them to get some food in their system. Alternatively, you can try the lipstick method, which is really gross, but really effective. And at least it was when I tried it for my blind gecko, Rago, who had been off food for like a month and a half by the time that I got him. And I tried the lipstick method one night and it worked. And then the next night he was eating off of tongs. So it has a good success rate from my experience. That doesn't mean you'll have the same success rate though. So the lipstick method, like I said, is gross, but it's basically where you puncture an insect or you cut open the insect and you take the guts of the insect and put it onto the gecko's mouth. Now, the smell and the taste that may entice them to eat the whole insect, it also might not work, but it is worth trying. Now, at any point in time, if your gecko has like lethargy or is dropping weight really fast or has any sort of health problems that you're noticing, please consult a vet. Now, if the methods that I mentioned in this video don't work, I really don't know what, what else to do. <laughs> like, I feel like I've listed every option that I've possibly used or could use to get a gecko to eat again. And my best recommendation is to be patient and keep trying. Now you don't wanna do this like four or five times a day cause that'll just stress out your gecko, you know? Just once or twice a night in the normal time that you'd feed your leopard gecko, just see if like they'll take a hornworm off tongs, leave a bowl of food in the enclosure to see if they'll take it. Try the lipstick method, you know, see if they're interested in some rapashi grub pie. Like it's okay to try a multitude of these at the same time, but just know that like in most cases, a reptile isn't going to starve itself to death and reptiles can go a long time without eating. And the best thing that you can do is be patient and wait for your reptile to like rectify the situation themselves. And also to never offer waxworms until the issue is corrected. That's probably the number one thing I see wrong that happens is people will start to panic and then they'll start offering waxworms again. And it just like puts you back at square one and you're gonna have the issue for even longer. So those are my recommendations for how to treat and correct waxworm preference, also known as waxworm addiction. Again, I'm sorry if anyone finds that term offensive. I don't know what else to call it because that is what it's widely called online. So again, I apologize if that is insensitive to anyone. But I thank you for watching and I hope you found this helpful, informational, and insightful. Please let me know if you did down below. Also, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, check the links below, all the good stuff, and with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.